All right, I was trying to record earlier and I had the crop on, so it probably didn't turn out. Uh, headed to the sh coffee shop right now to try out some editing of the Blackmagic RAW files on my new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Got a uh, decaf Americano. So we're gonna get some shots here um, of us on laptops, you were saying? Oh yeah. Thanks, Gabe. <laughs> So today, I'm trying out the Blackmagic RAW footage on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, which we're gonna be shooting Blackmagic up in the mountains in yes, two we weeks. Are. Making a couple of films, it's gonna be really sweet. So check awesome. it out. Also, I just got a really cool LED light today for $35 and it's amazing. I'll show Did you. you, it's pretty sweet. Oh, cool. Anyway, we're gonna try out some of this RAW footage Again. on this new computer. All right, peace. Sweet. Today we are taking a look at editing Blackmagic RAW 6K files on the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. I just got this and it's pretty awesome. I went from this guy, my wife's 2013 13 inch MacBook Pro, slimmer, to the new 2016, or sorry, 2019, 2020, 16 inch MacBook Pro with retina display, awesome. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing and liking. Also just a quick reminder, I don't make money on these YouTube videos. Any clicks through the links below really helps my channel out. Also on that note, because I don't make money, I just don't have a lot of time to put into editing. Therefore, some of the aspects of these videos like audio or whatever might not be perfect, so I apologize. But because of that fact, please don't leave negative comments. It just really isn't helpful. I know that certain things are not perfect. Totally understand that. If you don't like it, don't watch. But those of you who are watching, thank you for participating. Thank you for following along. And I know a lot of you guys have been following along as I've been building my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K rig and, and finding accessories to, to, to use with it and finding things that work, finding things that don't. And today we're gonna talk about editing on a laptop. We'll go into that in a minute. Just wanna give you a few updates. Apologize for posting. I had published um, one of the music videos that I just created for a client. I published it and then they're like, hey, we're not actually releasing this for another two weeks. Can you take it down? I was like, oh shoot. I thought that they were releasing the video with the release of their single on Spotify and iTunes and they weren't. So I had to pull that off, but it will be back in just a week's time. So be on the lookout for that on Friday. Uh, the music video Kids from the band State Lines will be on their YouTube channel as well as my YouTube channel as a client uh, portfolio piece. Okay, new gear. I actually ordered a Pelican case for my Blackmagic Cinema Rig so that I could actually leave my rig assembled and put it into the case. That was supposed to have arrived yesterday and it still is not here. Today is Saturday and it won't be arriving until Monday now. So I have to wait. That'll be on next episode's update. So that's first gear update. Second gear update. I got this new cool LED light. I can't hold it right now because it's being used for a fill light. But amazing little light. Uh, you'll see it in one of these clips. This sucker. Here it is. Yeah, 35 bucks. Really? This thing's here, I'll turn it on for you. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. Wow. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is crazy bright. Dude. Good 35 that. bucks. Yeah. So we're gonna try it out in the mountains. Oh, sweet, dude for $35 on Amazon, link below. Check this thing out, freaking amazing. I'm really impressed. I use a bunch of Genere, you know, the big light panels. I have four of those. I paid over $1,000 for the, the kit of four. This thing is 35 bucks. I would happily take this four of these, you know, at 120, $140 or whatever. You got a killer setup. Highly recommend these. I'm gonna be taking this traveling with me and really put this to the test. Outdoors, durability, uh, weather proof test. Anyway, that's some new gear. Also, like I mentioned a few episodes ago, 
I bought a shotgun mic. And I, I told you all of my skepticism of shotgun mics. Are they worth it? You know, any, any more than just using in-camera audio? Well, I found out they're not really that worth it because you'll see these clips here. The audio is almost identical. All right, this is Gabe. Hey, how's it going? Gabe's going with me to Washington. That's right. And I'm just buying a LaCroix. LaCroix for the man. Right. Oh, you know what? The mic wasn't even. Frick. Why do I always do a retake? This is Gabe. How's it going? Gabe's going to Washington with me. You can't see what he really looks like, but. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're going to Washington in like two weeks. Two weeks? It's coming up okay. soon, dude. Oh. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Are you ready? There it is. I'm not showing my card. <laughs> yes. That's it for gear updates. I'm actually going to be traveling in two weeks time to Washington, to the Mount Baker National Forest. Gabe is coming with me. Uh, you just met him in the video. We are gonna do some filming for my company, Faro Films, and also some awesome behind the scenes content that is gonna be going back in the direction of my original intent for my YouTube channel. It's called The Real Adventure, where I basically show you how difficult it is to actually go out into the wilderness and film. So you're gonna see all the behind the scenes stuff of how hard it is to drag all your camera gear up a mountain and shoot an actual piece, an actual video, a, a short film or, or narrative film. We're gonna show you the difficulties of doing that. Number one, we're actually gonna do it. We're gonna show you the film itself as well. Really go back in the direction of the real adventure that I had originally intended for my YouTube channel. Please stay tuned, subscribe. Editing on the MacBook 16 inch, MacBook Pro 16 inch retina display. Here are my specs. Actually, I gotta pull them up. So I have the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019 model, 2.3 gigahertz, eight core processor, 64, gigaper, 64 gigabytes of 2667 megahertz DDR4 RAM, the AMD Radeon Pro 5600M, eight gigabyte video card, Intel UHD graphics card, a one terabyte solid state internal drive. So I basically went with, you know, how you go on the Apple site and the, the Apple website and they give you, you know, do you want this 16 inch MacBook Pro? You want this 16 inch MacBook or this one? Um, I went for the most expensive one, the one on the right, and then I pretty much maxed it out except for processor and hard drive. The reason being is I always edit off of an external drive, so I don't need eight terabytes of internal storage. That is nice, but to be honest, I'm always editing off of my T5 cards anyway. So it didn't make sense for me to pay what, what it, it's like an extra four grand for an eight terabyte solid state internal. Don't need it. And then the processor, I didn't upgrade either because I knew that for the most part, this proce processor would be sufficient to edit and export. We'll go into those details right now as we check out editing on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Starting with loading, scrubbing and playback. Before we even do that, what you're gonna need to do for Blackmagic RAW files, for those of you shooting in Blackmagic, you're gonna need to go to the Blackmagic website and download their Blackmagic RAW plugin. And basically this allows you to manipulate the raw footage in Premiere Pro. DaVinci already has that. Uh, Final Cut doesn't allow it. So you need to download this if you're using Premiere. If you're using DaVinci, don't even worry about it. You're good. Um, but yeah, you're going to need to download that if you use Premiere. And I'm guessing that most of you use Premiere. So now loading, scrubbing, playback. I had zero issues, zero uh, lag in in any of these areas. I always load up all my footage. I kind of just drag and drop. I don't do the import option in Premiere. I drag and drop. Seconds, it's in there, all in my subfolder in my in my bin. <clears throat> I label it BMPCC for Blackmagic. Um, so I have all my Blackmagic footage. You'll see here in my bin loads instantly i can scrub it i can i can load it into the preview viewer and scrub it full quality no issues it looks beautiful uh 6k of course on that you know what is that six six inches 
of the screen, you don't need 6K, but it's nice to have because you can definitely see some of the detail lost when you go down to half or quarter or eighth, of course. But had no issues scrubbing it in full quality, full resolution, full quality in that previewer. So then I load it up and put it in my sequence. I load up all my clips. You'll see here, I just kind of dragged it. I just kind of dropped several clips right into the sequence just so I could try out the playback. So I hit the playback at full quality plays perfectly. Now this is before anything. I haven't touched the raw data. I haven't, I haven't put an adjustment layer or film convert or anything on it. Just the clips playback in full quality had no issues. So I'm really happy with that. So if you know, you into in a, in a slower computer, you definitely run into issues of scrubbing and playback speeds, which is very annoying because you want to actually see where the camera was shaking or whatever, Ex overexposure, underexposure, and if it's lagging, if it's glitching, you know, sometimes that's really frustrating as an editor. You want to be able to see the entire clip smoothly and know what you're getting. So really happy that this is really smooth. <clears throat> so yeah, you'll see me editing these in the sequence. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change some of the raw settings in the master of each clip effect settings or effects parameters you'll see in the master section. And what I do is you'll, you'll see my process here. Um, I'll go down Usually I'll start with the midpoint and I'll bring that down if, you know, if, if my exposure is off, which it usually is, because when I'm shooting in RAW, I kind of just pull the camera out and hit record. As long as I'm under that 1000 ISO range, which I went into in another episode, take a look at that. But if I'm in that 100 to 1000 ISO range, I just go out and I shoot and I worry about the ISO later because I won't run into any issues of exposure as long as it's, you know, within one or two stop range. If I'm like five stops overexposed, I can't recover that. But if I'm in a good range, I'll just let it, I'll just worry about that in post-production. So I go in, I change my, my ISO settings if necessary. I change the midpoint, I change the black point. Uh, usually the saturation as well, and sometimes the contrast. And then I'll, then I'll add my film convert layer to grade the footage. And of course, do your white balance as well. All in that process, I have had no issues. It's so smooth. It, cha it The changes are represented very quickly on the preview monitor. I love working with Blackmagic RAW. And on this computer, it's super fast. So I'm really happy about that. Something I did notice with this computer is that it does tend to get pretty hot. If you're using it sitting on your lap, say, sometimes I work in bed, you know, on a lazy Saturday morning, I wanna just work in bed for an hour, get some things done, and it heats up pretty well. Not uncomfortably hot like my old 2011. It could probably start a fire with that thing, so hot. But it definitely gets significantly warm. Something I like about this computer is, number one, how slim it is, how lightweight. Um, I really love the retina display and how bright it gets, because I'm usually editing, I have this big French door here, or sliding door, and it lets in a ton of light, so I can be sitting on the couch editing, no problems, it's really bright and really sharp. I really like, I'm really happy with that with the screen, with the display, with the graphics card. Something else that I'm absolutely blown away by on this computer is the six speaker sound system. So there's three on each side and it looks like your typical MacBook Pro, your 15 inch or your 16 inch models from the past where it has the speakers right there on the side. But this thing sounds phenomenal. The first time I loaded up some music and played it on this, I fell in love with music again. It just sounds freaking amazing. That's all I can say. I'm just blown away by the sound quality. So editing audio on this is a lot of fun even. So now let's go back to sequences. Um, the one thing that I noticed, this was with my iMac and with this Mac, and I probably told you about my iMac 
earlier, but I, I maxed that, like maxed it out. I put everything you could possibly put in it minus upgraded hard drive, but it is a fast machine. Same thing with the MacBook Pro, really fast machine, but the only time I really encountered slow performance was when I'm working with a 6K sequence and the 6K raw footage. It does, it lags a little bit, it glitches, you'll see the, the, the footage kind of stutter in playback. Still not, not crazy bad, like I'm editing on, on an old computer kind of stuff. That was the only time I really noticed some sort of speed or power issue when dealing with just viewing the raw. Of course, when I add an adjustment layer with film convert, that definitely slows it down a lot as well because you're, you're using almost twice the CPU. Those are really the only two times that I noticed in the editing process that this computer slowed down. But apart from that, it, it wasn't even a significant amount to where I'm unhappy and I'm just getting pissed off that it's just like glitching and lagging every two seconds. You know, it really was not even terrible. And you'll see in this the screenshot footage here how 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 pretty decent it was. But then when I downscale my 6K footage into a 4K sequence, no problems whatsoever. And most of the stuff that I do is in a 4K sequence. I, I rarely do a 6K sequence. Most of the time I'm only doing 4K and it performs perfectly, really smooth on the iMac and on the MacBook Pro. And finally, export and compression. These are the spots, this, this is really where the iMac pulls ahead compared to the MacBook Pro. What will take my iMac about five minutes, say a, a five minute sequence or a three to five minute sequence with a film convert adjustment layer, will probably take six minutes to export six minutes to compress, uh, excuse me. Whereas the MacBook Pro will probably take around 20 to 25 minutes doing that exact same sequence. So this is really where it slows down. It's manageable if you need to travel and edit and export and compress. This thing is a powerhouse that will do the job for you, guaranteed. It's not something to even worry about the export time. Uh, I think the last episode that we did from Avila Beach featuring the, you know, traveling with the Blackmagic 6K camera. That episode actually took about an hour to export, but still not terrible considering it was a 4K sequence, 15 minutes of footage, raw footage, graded. So overall, I'm really happy with this computer. I, I think I spent, after taxes, it would have been around $4,800. So for that money, of course, you should be getting a good computer. I'm really happy with the way it edits. It's fast, it's efficient, it loads your apps really fast. I can be multitasking, I can open up Photoshop while I'm opening in Premiere or After Effects. Overall, really, really happy with this computer and how it edits the Blackmagic RAW footage and of course the Sony footage. But thank you for watching. If you like these videos, please subscribe. Stay tuned, like I said, for more videos, especially coming from Washington State in the wilderness and I'll see you next time.